The 30-game college season, as opposed to 82 in the NBA, magnifies every loss. There's a lot at stake in a season, and the days immediately following a loss tend to generally be unpleasant in college basketball. Don't believe me? Let's flash back to December 17, 2013. Southern Illinois lost to Murray State by eight. Here's SIU coach Barry Hinson on the loss. We're soft. Uh, we've been enabled uh, for whatever reason. Uh, I got a bunch of mama's boys right now. We got men and women serving our country. They don't get to take days off. You know, we're, we're, we're going to college and getting it paid for. I think rebounding, I, I, think, it's, I think it's twofold. I, I, I've been telling my wife this for your size doesn't matter. Off game, off game, yeah, Marcus had an off game. Marcus was absolutely awful. That's about as PG rated as I can say it. He was awful. Our guards were awful. Our three starting guards had one assist and seven turnovers. They must think it's a tax credit. It's unbelievable how our starting guards play. And let's talk about our big guys. Two for 11. How can you go two for 11? My wife, my wife can score more than two buckets on 11 shots because I know my wife will at least shot fake one time. For this video, my idea was to take a data-oriented look at how this type of blow up by a coach might impact a team. Obviously, this is a very difficult, if not impossible, thing to study, so let's take a step back for a second. Last season, I was on the New Mexico State coaching staff. We beat our rivals, University of New Mexico, 75-56. to There was one major reason for the win, offensive rebounding. We had 25 offensive rebounds and rebounded 61% of our misses. At that point in time, it was the highest offensive rebounding game of the season. It doesn't take a coach to realize that it's pretty likely UNM's biggest takeaway from the game was their lack of defensive rebounding. Not only would this be relayed to the team in the locker room immediately after the game, but in practice and film every day leading up to the next game. It's pretty safe to say that the need to box out and defensive rebound was emphasized ad nauseum in practice by UNM in the three days between our game and their next game against Tennessee Tech. So the question here is, can you become a better rebounding team in just three days? Basketball players and humans in general are of course subject to psychological factors. Take the hot hand as an example. Most studies show that there is little to no evidence for the hot hand. If you make several shots in a row, you generally aren't more likely to make the next one. But the hot hand, or at least the idea of it, does have an impact on decision making. A study I did years ago on Marshall Henderson showed that after he made a three, there was a 72% chance his next play was a three-point shot. After he missed a three, there was only a 38% chance. So let's go back to rebounding. Is it a decision that can be emphasized for immediate results by coaching, or is it a skill that needs longer-term development? I went through every college basketball game in the last 10 years and found the games where a team allowed their opponents to rebound over 50% of their missed shots in a loss. The loss is key here because it provides the team extra motivation to correct the mistakes the next game. In the 10-year sample, that happened 1,956 times. The next step is to look at the games immediately following the 1,956 losses. For all of those games, we can calculate what the expected offensive rebounding percentage would be just based off of the two teams' rebounding stats. This expected number doesn't take into account the extra motivation a team has from their previous game. By comparing the expected number to the actual number, we are trying to isolate the impact of the previous game. The average expected rebounding percentage allowed in those 1,956 games was 33.0%. The actual rebounding percentage, 33.0%. If we break it down to a game by game level, 51% of teams rebounded better than would have been expected and 49% of teams rebounded worse than would have been expected. Not a particularly compelling difference. The moral of the story here is that a skill like rebounding is probably built up over a long period of time and obviously extremely dependent on your personnel. Abstract topics like these are always difficult to properly quantify and test, and there are so many outside factors involved. But it appears that rebounding doesn't simply happen overnight. It takes a combination of talent, coaching, and potentially some emphasis that's built up over the course of a season.